what we're going to talk about here today is something I, I call Game Show Classroom, because we've got all these tools out there now that let us do kind of like formative assessment, be able to ask kids questions in this game show style format, which is so much fun. And what's neat is that as these have caught on, there are more and more and more options. And so a lot of times people think about Kahoot. You guys are probably familiar with Kahoot, right? Okay. So Kahoot is an excellent tool for that, but that's not the only one. And so I want to show you a couple of the other ones that are out there. Um, so real quick before I start, um, I want to mention that this is a 70-inch interactive monitor from ViewSonic. We've got to pay the bills, right? <laughs> and so it's got some really cool features. One of my favorite ones is that if you hold in two fingers, it pulls up this little interface. And you can actually annotate right on top of the screen. You can do it with multiple colors. Watch this. If you make a mistake and you've got to erase, oh. There it goes. It knows the side of your hand. Isn't that amazing? And so whenever you're done, you can hit this cloud button right here, and it will take a screen <clears throat> excuse me, a screenshot of what's on the screen, and it will upload it to, ready for this? Straight to your Google Drive. If you, if you do Google, you know, it sticks it right in there so that you can send it along to your, you know, your students who are absent or whatever. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool feature. So, and then this is the button you use to sweep everything away. OK. Cool monitor, right? Yeah, interactive display. So, um, so anyway, we've got a couple of these options. And so this is, a, this is a blog post that I wrote about some of the options. If you want to see this, this page, it's at ditchthattextbook.com slash game show. And that's got all of the, the stuff I'm going to talk about. And so I'll tell you a little bit about what makes each one different from the others. And so one of the first ones that everybody thinks of is Kahoot, of course. You know, Kahoot is great because you can put a question up here and you've got all the possible answers and each of the students can ring in with their own device. Two things that are great about Kahoot. One, it creates this like electric experience when you see the answer pop up on the screen and you've got these kids over here that are groaning because they got it wrong and these over here that are cheering because they got it right and it all happens right in that moment. Um, the other thing that's great about Kahoot is since it's been around the longest, it has the biggest library of teacher-created games that you can draw from. I think that their library is up to like the eight or nine million mark, yeah, of, of things that teachers or students or whoever have created. And so what's great about that is if you can find something that works, that's great. If you can find something that's close, you can even duplicate it into your account and then make changes to it, add new questions to it, change the possible answers, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so, so that's another great thing about Kahoot. So one of the drawbacks of it, though, if you've played this with students before, have you ever had lagging devices? Where the question comes up, and it doesn't come up on their device. I've had students totally melt down. I mean, I've had adults <laughs> in professional development melt down because the, it just wouldn't load. And so there's another tool that goes around that a little bit, and that is quizzes. So quizzes is an awful lot like Kahoot, except that all of the questions come right onto your device, and it's more student-paced. Because the other one, it's on the screen class-paced, right? So what happens is the student gets the question, and they randomize the question, so everybody's getting different stuff. They get the question, and then they pick the answer. The faster the answer, the more points they get. They still count that. But then it shows you whether you're right or not, and then it moves on to the next one. And so some kids will finish up before the other ones, but they don't feel rushed. And that way it kind of goes at their own pace, which is, which is really great. The other thing that's fun about quizzes is that whenever you get it right or wrong, it shows one of these little memes. And the fun part about that is you can make your own memes too. Yeah. Yeah, so it lets you choose the picture you want, and then you assign the text on it, and you can create those all yourself, which is pretty cool. So that's quizzes. That is for, totally free, too. All right, so then, are you guys familiar with Quizlet? Yeah. Qu Grant, you know about, yeah. Hi, Grant. <laughs> all right, so Quizlet is kind of like digital flashcards, right? And so for me, in the classroom, I've made just tons of sets of these digital flashcards. And I was able to give them to my students, but there was only so much they could do with them. Well, now, if you have these sets of digital flashcards, 
you can play a Kahoot Quizzes style game with them called Quizlet Live. And what's awesome about Quizlet Live that's different from the rest is it's the best collaborative game for lots of kids to play on teams. Because you can play some of the other games on teams. But what this does is it sets you up with two other partners. So this is you, and then you've got your two other partners, three kids in a group. And they'll take nine of the terms from your list. I get three of them, my partner gets three of them, my other partner gets three of them. They'll ask a question, and the person who has that term has to ring in. So that also means sometimes that you have to show restraint and know that I don't have this term, I can't ring in. Or otherwise, it sets you way back. And so it gives a real team collaborative feel to it, which the other ones kind of have but kind of don't. So, so anyway, that's, and I've heard just rave, have you guys used Quizlet Live at all? OK, I've heard rave, rave reviews from teachers that use this. So definitely worth checking out. Two more options. You got Quizlies. Quizlies is kind of like Kahoot. It has the question, it has the possible answers, students ring in on their devices. The flash isn't the thing that sets Quizlies apart, because it's not as flashy as Kahoot is. The difference is the data. Yeah, because if data is important to you of what you can see out of your students' answers, Quizlies is the best, because it gives you all these different graphs. And so it will show you the questions they struggled with, the, oh, there we go, the questions they struggled with the most, the ones that they did the best on. It'll show you who answered on each, who answered what on each question. The other thing that's cool about this is you can categorize your questions. So if you have like three subtopics in a chapter, you can say, this question is from this subtopic, this question is from this subtopic, and then just see how the students do on subtopic one? How they do on subtopic three? You see? Yeah, so Quizalize gives all of these, those options that the other ones don't. And then the last one I don't have on here, but I'll show you real quick. Familiar with Plickers? Ever heard of Plickers? Yeah, okay. So Plickers is another good one. And that's for if you don't have devices, obviously, right? You just have the one, the one teacher device. And so you print out all of these little Plickers codes and ask the question. Students answer by saying, okay, this is, I'm gonna hold my code this way for A, this way for B, this way for C, this way for D. And so that way you can use the same paper. And the amazing thing is you use the Plickers app like this and you scan all of their codes with the camera using the Plickers app. And then it tells you how all of the different students did, how the class did as a group. It gives you all of this data. You can get all of that data without students even having to have the device. So yeah, so all of these have you know, kind of the different things. Plickers will do not very many devices. Quizalize does the data, so on and so forth. So you've got all these, all these different options. So if you want to check that out, that's again at ditchthattextbook.com slash game show. Now, to wrap up real fast, I have a free ebook that's available on my website. It's called 101 Practical Ways to Ditch That Textbook. So I'm always looking for ideas for technology, creativity, innovation in the classroom. It's just a huge brainstorm of a bunch of those ideas with screenshots and links and icons and different stuff like that. And I've got another ebook and some notes for presentations that I do all on this one spot. So if you want to get all of that stuff, <laughs> you, go to dit you go to getmatstuff.com. So that's where you can check that out. So, all right, questions? No questions. Covered it? All right, great. <laughs>